Hi, everyone. I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our interview series. And today we're talking about SDOH, or Social Determinants of Health. And our special guest is Tim Suther. He's Senior Vice President and General Manager of Data Solutions at Change Healthcare. Welcome, Tim. John, thank you for having me. I hope uh, you and yours are safe in these uh, challenging times. Yeah, well, I imagine SDOH has changed for all of us in these challenging times. But let's say, uh, you know, before we dive into the topic today, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself and Change Healthcare? So uh, Change Healthcare is one of the uh, largest independent health IT companies. Uh, every day, 14 to 15,000 uh, dedicated employees of Change Healthcare are focused on uh, inspiring a better healthcare system in, uh, in the United States. And my role in the company is to put data to work in new and imaginative uh, ways. So every day we are seeking uh, new uses of data that help to improve uh, people's lives and to improve the economics of the healthcare system in, in our country. That's great. Well, I, I'm excited to talk about the data. And you guys an announced a new SDOH, Social Determinants of Health Analytics Solution, just recently. Tell us about what you've done and how it works. Yeah, so I, uh, I joined Change Healthcare uh, three to four years ago after a long career in uh, working in financial services and advertising technology. And one of the things that surprised me when I entered the healthcare system was just how blind it was to information about patients if you're a health system or members if you're a health plan. Uh, they were blind information about people, uh, of their uh, life circumstances. So they could tell you a lot about the clinical care uh, that, uh, that they were delivering, but not so much about uh, their health literacy, their income, their wealth, uh, access to transportation challenges in their life. And as you know, it's those factors that uh, drive our health and wellness, something on the order of 80% of our health and well-being are determined by those factors. So we saw this great gap between something that was having such an outsized impact on people's lives, yet the healthcare system uh, wasn't doing a great job of capturing it. So we decided to, uh, to do something about it, and that was the, the announcement that we made. We look forward to talking to you about it. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, my audience has heard all about SDOH, right? We've been to all the conferences. We all, we know all the numbers. It says how important this is, how much it costs healthcare. All of those things are very familiar to the healthcare IT Today audience and the need to solve the problem. You know, I, I think the challenge I've always had is kind of twofold. One is how do you get the data to the right people? And then two, how do you enable those people to use that data to actually do some good? So let's talk about the data, since you kind of said you're, you know, that's that's uh, one of the things you're working on, right? What data are you using for this solution? Is it largely the clinical data? Where are you? What other sources are you pulling in? So uh, Change Healthcare uh, has a, a business of uh, capturing uh, and de-identifying data where allowed by contract and by law, and we have. A, uh, a, a database now of about 33 billion uh, care events uh, going yeah. back to 2012. So we know a lot about um, the diagnoses and the care and uh, prescriptions that people are uh, receiving uh, from clinicians across the country. The blind yeah. spot that we saw was everything else. So where do you go, you know, to go get uh, information about the circumstances of life because the healthcare system is not capturing it. So I spent uh, many, many years in financial services and in the advertising industry. So I happen to know uh, a lot of uh, data sources that have that type of information. So we spent a lot of time evaluating alternatives and for the, a good portion of the past year, we evaluated those alternatives and as importantly, spent time integrating it. You would think that would be easy to do, to take information about a patient that shows up in the healthcare system with information from geodemographic sources. You would think that would be easy. It is not. Uh, so we had uh, a substantial amount of time to integrate information you know, from de-identified claims with you know, popular geodemographic sources, and, and that's what we've done. And now we've got this uh, foundation that allows uh, health systems and health plans 
to reliably uh, understand what happens in the doctor's office with what is happening uh, outside the doctor's office. And that's the foundation of the uh, the announcement that we made. Yeah. I mean, you think it would be easy, but uh, anyone that's done any sort of uh, patient identification knows at least that challenge is a basis. Uh, so it is hard. What are some examples of the data that you think will be most useful from this? Is it the housing data? Is it, you know, I mean, we always talk about where they live, determines their health, things like that. Is, is that the data or what are some examples that you think will be like, oh, this data is going to be really impactful? Well, those examples and more, I mean, the, the core reality is we all experience healthcare differently. There are going to be, you know, some patients that have economic vulnerabilities, others that have housing vulnerabilities or food or health literacy, or maybe they're taking care of a elderly parent or they are a, a single uh, parent household with young children. All of those have an impact on our ability to access care and, um, you know, uh, different health systems, different health plans, they are going, they find that the social determinants are going to vary dramatically across uh, ge uh, geographies. And that's, that's part of uh, the service that we provide is to help organizations understand those, uh, understand those uh, differences. So, you know, we've done work where, you know, we've looked at the economic stability of the uh, households and to no one's great surprise, if you lack means, uh, you are more likely than not to uh, head to the emergency room. And if you have means, you are more likely to go to outpatient services where, you know, preventative checkups uh, happen. So we see that, you know, clearly uh, in the data. Uh, we've been doing uh, research, um, you know, uh, with academic medical centers looking at the COVID pandemic. And we see everything that you read about which is that people of uh, color are over-indexing on uh, diagnoses and inpatient and people who are Caucasian or Asian, they're under-indexing. So every day, you know, we get to see the changing makeup of the way healthcare is uh, delivered in this country. And now we've added the dimension of social determinants to it. And we think it's a you know, really powerful asset for health systems and uh, you know, health plans alike to, uh, to better plan and execute uh, care in their communities. So how would a health system use this? Like, are you taking this data and pushing it down to the point of the care to the doctor for them to be able to use it? Or are you doing some sort of analysis to help the health system know, oh, we need to invest in these resources? Like, how would a health system, you know, our audience is largely a health system, uh, health plans are interesting as well, but you know, as a health system, how can they use this data? Yeah, so uh, the foundation for what we're doing is a is a connection of de-identified claims to social determinants. And with that, we are focused on solving three problems. The first problem is for any health system that needs to make a prioritization uh, decision about what social determinants of health matter most to their population. We offer service. We offer a service for that. So any health system can come to change healthcare. We will look at and perform a, a study on the social determinants that matter for their uh, particular uh, population will produce a, a nice report for that. So the benefit there is uh, you can prioritize what matters most to your community as opposed to just thinking about social determinants as a abstract concept. That, that's problem number one. Problem number two is the one you, you described. So uh, uh, the healthcare system overall does not do a great job of capturing social determinants. So we've done the hard work. We've identified uh, what the social determinants are. We've linked it to, uh, to patients and any health system that wants uh, that data uh, augmented into uh, their, their own systems, we can make that happen. And then the third is for those that want to do advanced uh, data science, so they want to do their own modeling for their own population, we have a, uh, a secure environment where uh, the de-identified claims data, along with the major social determinants, is already pre-aggregated and ready uh, for data scientists that want to go uh, do research on it. Yeah, that's great. I, I love the three uh, frameworks. That, that, that makes it really interesting. I mean, I've always been interested in, you know, how do you push it to the point of care? 
Uh, and and I, I'm, I'm torn on that question because it's like, okay, if they have that data, can they really do anything? But there is some stuff a doctor can do. They can prescribe a generic versus, a, you know, a name brand, or they, they can look at alternative therapies if they can't afford a certain drug. I mean, so there are certain things. It's just, a, I think it's going to be an interesting challenge, that next step, which is how do you treat it? But um you know, how should a clinician use this data once they get it? Do you have any examples there? I mean, I think the one case makes sense, a health system, where do we prioritize our partnerships, right? And things like that. Even in ACO, it makes sense as we move to value-based care and all that. Uh, how about a clinician? How, how should they look at the data? Well, having a perspective into the factors that are affecting their uh, patients' health and well-being beyond the clinical experience is a great place to start. Uh, so the the first you know step is to actually have the information at their disposal so that they understand uh, understand those uh, those factors. And then secondly, uh, you know it's kind of back to the the, the point about the point about uh, prioritization. You know, um, there's only uh, limited resources that every health system has. So understanding you know where the most significant impact is uh, is likely to to be had. That that's where, if I were a health system administrator, I would uh, I would be focused on is trying to understand what patients in my uh, community would most benefit uh, from you know particular community uh, community programs. Yeah, you can already see the meeting at the uh, the, the medical groups uh, meeting together, and you know the, all the data has been pushed there, and they're like, "Hey, we have a new partnership that provides housing." And the doctor's like, "Oh yeah, I had five patients last week who needed that. <laughs> if they've had that information, yeah. that might be the first step." So that, that's pretty interesting. Is, is there any data that you don't have yet that you really want that you're still working to get? Yeah, uh, I got one more idea for you on the other one. I, you've got sure. my uh, my mind uh, kind of uh, still processing your your yeah. question. One of the things um, that strikes me is you know, the way that research is um, is done in this country, and and we're in a pandemic right now, right? And thankfully, we have uh, you know very promising uh, vaccines on the horizon. But the way that uh, those drugs are trialed, uh, how representative are they? of the diversity of populations that uh, practitioners are actually going to serve. So one of the things that we've been doing is working with academic medical centers across the country to do all kinds of observational research. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, we all experience healthcare differently. So understanding the way that particular therapeutic interventions are experienced by, uh, you know, various ethnicities or people that uh, may have, ad, you know, adherence uh, issues because they don't have access to care. Uh, that study, uh, you know, that is being done by uh, academic medical uh, researchers is going to make its way out to uh, to practitioners. So imagine not just having the social de uh, determinants of health information about the patient, but the implications that the smartest minds in America who are doing research on it. Now imagine having that at your uh, your disposal as well. So I think those are probably the two tangible things I would think about as a uh, as a clinician. Um, uh, information that we uh, we don't have. Uh, we spent a lot of time on this. So uh, you know we uh, we looked at uh, how um, you know what factors uh, indexed uh, to healthcare utilization. So we think we have a pretty good. Uh, pretty good start at it. Uh, and our ambition is to uh, continue to add to it. So um, we started started with uh, geodemographic characteristics. So uh, healthcare literacy, income, wealth, uh, presence of children, presence of elderly, transportation, food vulnerabilities. Um, the, uh, the wearables type of data is intriguing uh, to me. Um, I think we have uh, you know some challenges to make sure that that all gets properly de-identified for for research uh, purposes. But you know I, I wouldn't be surprised uh, to see wearables and uh, uh, you know uh, genetic uh, type of information make its way in. But those are those are uh, not for today. Uh, that'll be at some point in the future. Yeah, it's interesting to see the the mix of those because I think those are two areas that separate people are working on, right? The SDOH data, 
versus the clinical clinical data, right? FDA cleared, collected by the doctor, and then the wearable kind of personal consumable, which is not that medically relevant, but it's becoming more and more. I mean, I just did an interview with a live core, the most medically relevant <laughs> personal health data that there is. And I think we're going to have more of it. So it's going to be like, how are these going to combine and, and not, you know, it, I think that's going to be the next decade. It's going to be super interesting. So well, we're, we're absolutely focused on that. And one of the tricks on that, not tricks, one of the uh, critical parts of that is making sure you do that in a regulatory compliant way. Right. And this is uh, something that we are deeply, deeply focused on. The last thing that we want in our desire to better understand what affects patient uh, outcomes, the last thing that we want is to do that in a way that trips over you know, the very important privacy, you know, um, uh, regulations and protocols that are in place. And it's that third solution that I described where we make available this analytic environment. It, it actually has inbuilt with it an always on compliance um, uh, feature. So any analyst who's in there exploring a hypothesis about uh, their patient population, every single query is checked for HIPAA compliance. Every output before it gets output is checked for HIPAA compliance. So we are as excited as we are about the combination of this data and the potential to improve people's lives. We are equally excited about making sure we have the appropriate compliance and governance to make sure that it's done in the right way. That's awesome. Great. Well, it sounds like you have a pretty comprehensive solution. You've, you've put a lot of thought into this. I mean, we've been hearing about SDOH for so long. It's it's great to see solutions really coming to market. Uh, what What's next for the solution? Well, um, you know, the, the work that we're doing with academic medical centers, uh, I think, is important. Uh, you know, it's said if uh, you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. Mm -hmm. And this started on a journey when the pandemic was declared and we began isolating uh, claims data. So tests and diagnosis and inpatient and uh, hospital discharges. We started isolating all this data for you know, the brightest researchers in America. And that really uh, was inspiring to see these people hard at work, you know, trying to understand this, uh, this terrible, terrible disease. And uh, that also uh, gave us motivation to build upon that. So we want to continue to support uh, those research efforts that look at the interrelationship of what happens in the doctor's office with what happens when people are out living their lives. And it's not just a change healthcare story. The change healthcare uh, story, along with all these wonderful researchers who are working every day, you know, to make healthcare uh, better in this country. Yeah. That's great. And it really is a team sport that we're working on and uh, to solve this problems, uh, no one's going to do it themselves. You know, even though uh, Google, Amazon, and all those like to try, uh, you know, it seems, but no, it is exciting time. Uh, you know, as I look at SDOH, I, you know, going back to where I started to me, there's always been two problems. One is how do we get the right data to the right people? And then the second is once they have that data, what can they do about it? And I appreciate all, right. all the work you're doing to help, you know, solve it. I think the first part of that problem in a big way, which will prepare us to solve the second part, which is getting the resources to the right people, making the budget decisions that these healthcare organizations have to make to be able to push it. So thanks so much for your time, Tim. Again, I've been here with Tim Suther. He's Senior Vice President and General Manager of Data Solutions at Change Healthcare. If you want to find more great health IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareitoday.com. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, John. Have a fantastic day.